Because I led Barrington Walker and Dan Beal's campaigns, both Vic and Steve asked me to manage theirs. There are three main reasons I chose to work with Vic. First, Vic's a public health scientist, an epidemiologist during a pandemic. Perfect. Second, we need 12 to 15,000 more votes to win here federally. Those votes will mostly come from the suburbs. We know this statistically. Vic's connections to large institutions like Queens, the hospital, the civil service will help sway the left liberal and green swing voters we need. They've shown before they'll elect a racialized scientist. Lastly, when I asked my family, which of these two great candidates to get behind my youngest son, Ellie, posed the crucial question, who'll do the most good in Ottawa, dad? My answer was clear, so clear, I realized Vic could be the Minister of Health in an NDP government. I nominate Vic Sahai. Annie, bonjour and bienvenue. Je m'appelle Vic Sahai. It has been an honor to meet so many of you these past weeks. You have come to know me as a public health scientist, a passionate environmentalist, and a social activist. We share progressive values as New Democrats. Now we need to raise the bar. We must set our sights higher, and together we will. Ian won in 2018, and Barrington came close in 2019. Our team, led by Andrew, will build on these successes. I will earn the suburban voters we need to win. Many work at Queen's and, host and the hospitals, institutions I am connected to. Thousands of students with diverse backgrounds will be mobilized. Together, we will send an NDP member of Parliament to Ottawa. This will be a pandemic election, which I can fight with expertise and energy as an epidemiologist. But every 21st century election is a climate change election. A just recovery for all can be a leap towards a sustainable way of life. We will create hundreds of thousands of good union jobs. From renewable energy and affordable green housing to electrified public transit and millions of retrofits, an NDP government will lead a rapid transition to a post-carbon future. We must fix our sights on this future. Canadians are ready for it. The pandemic has exposed inequalities. Indigenous peoples, women, people of color, the economically disadvantaged, small businesses, and the elderly have all borne the brunt while the rich get richer. Serbs offered a taste of financial security that scared the liberals and the conservatives because people with income security won't accept precarious jobs. That's bargaining power. So the liberals axed it and are praying that people forget it. No, now is the time for a guaranteed livable income. We can create a floor under everyone, ending poverty and homelessness, unleashing creative energy. And it will pay for itself by cutting red tape and saving billions in healthcare. Let's be clear. A basic income go hand in hand with disability benefits, EI, and pensions. A just recovery must also include national childcare, pharmacare, and affordable housing for all. I came to Canada from Guyana when I was 11. My ancestors were indentured laborers. I lived and worked in Northern Ontario for many years, where I saw devastating violence and inequalities endured by Indigenous people. I will fight for meaningful reconciliation on a nation-to-nation -nation basis. I visit the protest camp at Sir John A's statue several times. An elder spoke of the ice joining the ice road joining Kingston and Wolf Island, and those relied upon by northern communities for supplies and livelihoods. The farmers with us today told me how climate change is impacting the land, the water, the weather. The ice will disappear forever. Floods will f and fires will rage. Our food supplies will be threatened if we don't rapidly transition to a green economy. Evidence is not enough. We need to convince the public, industry, and politicians 
This I can do. This I have done before. In Sudbury, I used evidence of child asthma and eMERGE visits to force INCO to scrub their smokestacks. I fought campaigns for HIV AIDS access and run for the cure. I have worked for international justice in Trinidad in Ethiopia. For 10 years, I continued this work as the director of the Research Institute at Hotel Du. Louise and I raised two sons, David and Alex, here. Alex is severely autistic. As Alex's dad, I have learned how to advocate for the most vulnerable. My father grew up in deep poverty. He said, an education is the greatest gift I can give you. Education is hope. The NDP will cut the, the student debts by $4 billion. I will push for national funding of post-secondary education similar to healthcare transfers to help the provinces and the schools avoid the same fate as Laurentian University while making tuition affordable for all. The NDP values are my values. I have lived them as an NDP member for over 30 years and as a vice president of this riding. A just recovery from this pandemic can be a springboard. We can build resilient and social justice while tackling climate changes. We must raise the bar. We must set our sights on these higher goals. I ask you to nominate me so we can expand the NTP votes in Kingston and the islands. Together, we will win.